What's up guys, Nostalgio here, back with another Master of Video, and today I'm going to be showing off my uh, Artifact Scythe Thunder Dragon deck. Uh, it's a deck where we basically just go Dagda into Thunder Dragon Titan. Um, during their turn, during their standby, draw phase, whatever, you activate any effect in your hand, discard it, um, you know, Dragon Matrix or Thunder Dragon Roar, uh, or Dragon Dark, I meant to say, uh, during your opponent's turn, and then... Activate the Dragon Titan effect to pop a card, and then you pop your set Scythe that you set off Dagda, and then you Scythe lock your opponent. And it's been pretty good. It's been fairly consistent, to be honest. Like, this deck definitely looks like it bricks, and it does brick, but it doesn't always brick. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and I also played a pretty heavy hand trap lineup um, in case, like, because you do brick sometimes, uh, I'd rather, like, have that backed up with something. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, a Biamaxi, a Nibiru, a Gamma, Ash, something like that. A lot of the time in this format, you can stop a lot of players, like, going first or second like you can stop a lot of players like with one to two hand traps but i mean the most unfair decks you obviously can't i mean one hand trap very very rarely does anything to drytron or um at emancipator the scariest decks in, in the game in my opinion so yeah who's to say but anyway so this deck's really cool it's been pretty consistent i do have a combo i do have a scythe combo um at the end of the video so stay tuned for that but before we get into the actual video Thanks so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoy the video. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. And then also, as always, I do have the affiliate link down in the description um, below. You can just click on it, shop, check out, and it directly supports the channel, costing you no extra. And it takes, I mean, no time. You know, it's very, very simple to do. Anybody can do it. It's really easy. Um, anyway, all that aside, let's get into the actual deck profile. So, if you guys, uh, if any of you play current TCG, you know the menace that Scythe is, Artifact Scythe. If you don't know what this card does, um, it has all the same summoning requirement as all the artifacts, where if it's destroyed set in, in the back row, then it summons out and then activates its effect. And Scythe's effect is to make it so your opponent cannot sum special summon monsters from the extra deck during that turn, which is, I mean, I mean it's game ending for, for like most decks. Like most decks just like, pass and then die or just scoop to to scythe and a lot of players don't know what scythe is and they'll like play a couple cards and be like why can't i do anything me and then and then scoop and, and that's like been my experience so far as people like don't scoop during the combo they get scythe and then they like take three minutes to figure out what's happening and then they finally read scythe and then they just scoop and that's kind of how it's been going um and, and it's been pretty consistent i've done it like i think three out of five games um that i went first i, I scythe which is like pretty good um obviously not as good as like every single deck in the in the real Yu-Gi-Oh game right now i mean those scythe decks do it very consistent more consistently but still it's pretty cool anyway all that aside let's get into the actual deck profile itself um you know i, I think i already said that but now we're actually gonna do it so into it let's talk about the thunder dragon cards first because they are the most important uh, first off, we have the triple regular Thunder Dragon. I think this card just adds to cons some consistency of the deck. It's a plus one. Um, it's pretty good. It does definitely suck when you draw two, when you open two. It's really bad, but I think the upsides are worth it to play this card in general. Um, it also makes it, it just adds another card that can immediately activate, making the normal summon Dragon Matrix an instant Colossus, which is a pretty big deal. So it's very good. Thunder Dragon of three. I like it. I think it's good. It's only like clunked up a couple times. It's been fine. It's been very good. Um, the rest of the Thunder Dragon cards, uh, some of them are on the list, unfortunately. Two Dragon Roar and one Hawk. The, that is the current, you know, ban list for these cards. I think it's pretty fair considering uh, Colossus is a one. Hit the consistency a bit. I think it's completely fair to this deck. Um, and honestly, probably worth it. Like, probably good for this deck. Um, Roar and Hawk are very powerful, but at one and two. So we're maxing out on those cards. We're also maxing out on three of the Thunder Dragon Dark. This is one of the main enablers for the deck. Um, obviously, this card and Thunder Dragon Matrix are both the ones with um, quick effect uh, in the hand, which uh, let, lets you pop with Dragon Titan on their turn during like their draw phase or standby phase, popping your own Scythe, activating the Scythe Lock. So they are the main enablers. You do have to draw them. Um, which is a little unfortunate. I mean, you can search them with, like, Gold Sark. Uh, you can banish, like, Dragon Dark and then search another one. Um, I believe you can do that. I, I hope you can do that. Now that I'm thinking about it, you probably can do that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty good. But I, I am currently not playing Gold Sark. Th that's definitely a card that I would say, hey, play that card. But it's an Ultra Rare. I don't have enough Ultra Rares on my account right now. I'm trying to finish the Brave, the uh, the Tenyi Synchro deck right now. Like, I need a couple more Ultras for that. Um but yeah that doesn't matter if you guys want that deck profile let me know in the comments down below if that sounds interesting to you um i'll do a video on that here soon but uh yeah that rounds off the dragon the thunder dragon cards i'm just maxing out on all of them except matrix uh matrix at two uh this card was just clunking uh two is good two seems good to me 
And uh, like I said, it's been fairly consistent still, so pretty good. And even if you don't scythe people, you can still end on like IP de uh, with like Colossus or like IP Colossus Titan um, or Spheres Colossus Titan. Like the deck still ends on pretty powerful boards um, without scythe, but like scythe is the name of the game. Like scythe is the main goal for this deck right now, I think. Um, so yeah, that's all the Thunder Dragon cards, and then we played the the uh, Triple Loof, uh, Loof Lupine as well. This card is a pretty solid starter. If you play Dual Links, you'll know. Um, this card's pretty good. What it does is you banish a monster from your, your hand, and then banish a monster from your deck that matches its attribute and type. So if you open a Loof Lupine and Dragon Roar, or a Loof Lupine and Dragon Dark, you have full combo, and that's really, really good. Um, it's actually insanely good, because you go Lupine, banish one, banish the other, and then you search one and special summon one, um, which pretty much just gets your entire deck rolling. You can search um, Thunder Dragon, you can search one of the um, guys that, you know, can activate during your opponent's turn um, for a Scythe. It's really just, like, whatever you need at the time, um, and it's really consistent. Like, Lu Lupine really makes the deck a lot better. It's a really good starter, um, so we max out on that card. Then the other monsters, like the main deck actual monsters that have substance, not the just the hand traps, are the one black dragon, one white dragon. Um, these cards are really insane with chaos space, and uh, chaos, like chaos space and allure are like really, really powerful uh, spell starters, and chaos space makes these cards absurd. I mean, you can these cards are at three. You can play any amount of these cards. You can play three of each of these cards. I'm just playing one one because chaos space is so good. Uh, but I didn't want to like add more of these cards because the deck's like brick, bricky enough uh, on its own, so I didn't want to like brick up on more of these cards. So I figured 1-1 one, one, um, just lets you get into it with the Chaos Space engine, um, which is really good. It's been really good. It's been, it's been really good. How many more times can I, can I say really good, right? 1-1 um, one, one has been very good. Um, next, we play the 1 Snow. I keep saying good. Snow's good. <laughs> this card's really powerful. Um, it's in Thunder Dragon, like, and we have triple snow, and I'm playing just one. Um, I was trying to fit in the Destrudo Shooting Riser Dragon stuff into this deck. I just, like, didn't fit it in. Um, but that would make the snow a lot better. Honestly, snow's, like, kind of bad in this deck. Like, it, it doesn't really do anything, because we don't really play any ways to send it. I could play, like, Foolish Burial and stuff, um, but I don't really play any way to send it. So, snow's kind of, like, weird. It's kind of just, like, icing on the cake. Um, uh, a lot of the time I have to, like, normal summon it and then link it off to get it into the grave. Um, but it's, it's, like, worth it. I, I wouldn't want to play Thunder Dragon without snow. Like, <clears throat> we have Colossus, we have snow, and all the Thunder Dragon cards, like, I just, I, I have to add this card into my list, like, no matter what, right? Like, it's Thunder Dragon, I have to add that card in my list, but it's just weird. I think I want to try, I want to test the Destrudo Shooting Riser stuff to make the snow a little more, like, good. But that play doesn't really help, um, Scythe any, so, like, this is more so, like, a Scythe deck, um, than the, like, the normal Thunder Dragon set up snow and Glosses and Titan and all that stuff. Um, so I'm just leaving it at this, the one snow, but... You could probably play more or just not play it at all in this build. Like, honestly, you, th that could be fine. Um, next, the last, like, actual monster is Levianir. Just playing the one Chaos Dragon Levianir. This card's really good. You can play more if you want, but, like, once again, it adds to the clunk of the deck. And, uh, yeah, there's not really any, like, tutor ability for that card other than Chaos Space. I mean, you can Chaos Space to search it, which is, like, good. It comes up, but, like, you almost always just want to Chaos Space these. But if you open one of these and Chaos Space, then cool. You get Levianir. Like, it's cool. You can rip a card, right? It's not bad. Um, so yeah, overall pretty good. Um, that's the actual monsters of the deck. Then uh, the rest of the cards are hand traps, which we play like a, a fair amount, a fair amount of them. Triple Ash, Triple Max C, two Gamma, and the one Driver for the Gamma. Um, just rounding out to a, a nice clean forty cards there um, with the hand traps. He's really good, dude. This song sucks too. Uh. Um. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Gamma. Gamma is really cool. Of course, Ash and Max C are like standard to the format, right? Because Ash stops Max C, and Max C is like one of the best cards in the game. So Ash and Maxi are like standard to a deck, so I'm not really gonna explain those, but Gamma is actually really good in this deck. Um, we do have really powerful spell starters that get Ashed all the time. K triple Chaos Space and Triple Allure. A lot of players will Ash those cards and then use Gamma and it's really powerful. You get two free bodies on board um, that can instantly make a cross sheep depending on the hand. Um, I'm not playing Halky Frybrax, I'm not playing Omega. Those cards could um, be good in this deck. I think, um, to be honest, I would probably cut the Transverser. Uh, Transverser is like, it's just flavor. Like this card is like very, very cuttable in this deck. You don't need to play this at literally at all. Um, so I'd probably cut that for an Omega, um, honestly. Like, I think that's probably the the move that I would do. Um, but, like, it's very rare that Gamma actually sticks on board. Like, you don't Gamma on their turn, you Gamma on your turn. It's really only from the spell starters. So it's, like, pretty rare. But, yeah, I'd probably play the Omega over it. But, yeah, Gamma's cool. Um, it's really good for that, like, purpose. Also, this deck clunks up sometimes. So, like, Gamma's a really good hand trap on their turn as well. 
Um, anyway, that's all the monsters um, in the one scythe. Did I say the one scythe? I mean, you know, it, it's a scythe deck. Like, of course, I'm playing the one scythe. Anyway, into the spells, we played the triple lore, triple chaos space. These are like the best spell starters um, for this deck. They're, they're insane. I mean, a lore is like plus ultra, chaos space is plus ultra. Like, these cards are just so powerful um, that, like, I mean, they're the best cards, like, in the deck. Like, they are just so good. Uh, maybe, maybe not a lore, but like chaos space. I mean, chaos space is gross. I mean, Dragon Lake players, you know. <laughs> you know. This card's insane. Um, so yeah, there, that is those cards. Then I played two, um, Thunder Dragon Fusion. You could probably cut this to one for Vert, um, or, you know, just like play two. Uh, three seems like it, it would be, it would be very, very clunky, but two has been good. I like drawing this card. It's a really good enabler for Dagda, like making Dagda and then activating Thunder Dragon Fusion, getting a Titan on board, activating the Chain Link 2 Dagda to the Dragon, Thunder Dragon Fusion. It's a really big deal. Um, I mean, that's like a good, good way of scything people. I think that's the way that I scythe people in the combo that I'm going to show later in the video. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's really good. Um, also, I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I am playing the one Nibiru here. Um, it was my 40th card. It just like works in the deck. I think it's good. Um, it gives you a card to draw off maxi is pretty cool. So and I have, I have one Nibiru on that account. So I write, right? Like what well, might as well. Um, anyway, so yeah, that is the spells. One Monster Reborn. This card's just like an, a, a cool extender. Um, this is definitely the card that I would cut if I was playing, uh, if I had the Monster or the um, Gold Sark. I'd cut the Reborn for the Gold Sark and just call it a day. Um, and also another card that could be cool is like Instant Fusion if you play the, um, it's a one. So like, I don't know if it's really worth playing the Instant Fusion in the one Kaminari attack in the extra deck. It, it might not be worth it, but it might be worth it. Like it's cool. But it once again, it's another ultra I just don't have. And then uh, I played two Call of Buy. I mean, it's called Buy, right? In a combo deck. Um, rounds it off to a clean 40-card deck. I think it's pretty good. I like this list a lot. I've been having a lot of fun with it. As far as the extra deck goes, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part. Um, so the one Colossus, Triple Titan. I think you could probably cut down to two Titan. Um, but I have... I Actually, I have not had the third one come up yet. Uh, it's usually just like Scythe, I win. Or my deck just bricks and I don't win. Um, that's really been my experience with this deck thus far. But... Um, yeah, like, Titan is really good, and a 3, I think, is fine. Um, you do have, like, a little bit of recyclability, being able to put it back to summon out another one, like, later, but I think I'd probably just stick with 3. Like, I don't think the extra deck room is too too big. Like like I said, I, really, the only thing I want to change is, like, add Kaminari attack with the Instant Fusion. That's probably it. And, I mean, I'm playing, like, Geonator Transverser. Like, obviously, the extra deck room is not, like, too, like, unbelievably tight. And, like I said, I want to play the Riser stuff, the Destruido Riser stuff, maybe, uh, but I feel like I'd have to play, like, a thicker line of, like, the actual Dragon Link stuff to make, like, Romulus get Ravine to send the, uh, the Destrudo to make Riser to send the Snow. It's a lot of extra things, and, uh, I don't know, like, how consistently that'll happen. So, I'll definitely have to test that a little bit more before I say, hey, play that stuff. But I think that's, like, another thing that I might change for, for the deck. Um, other than these, we have the one Striker Dragon. This comes up every now and again. It's really just to, like, switch one of these off in, on the board to get another one. And then, um, you can make an Instant Link 2 off of that. So, that's really good. Like, uh, go, you know, Black Dragon, link that into the Striker Dragon, search the White Dragon, special out the White Dragon. And then you instantly have a Dagda. You instantly have a Vert for later in the game. You instantly have a Cross Sheep. If that's all your play is possible, you instantly have a Sphere, um... So, like, across the board, just, it's good. Like, the one Strike Dragon is really good in the deck. It, it goes miles. It really does. Next, we have the one Sphere. Uh, sphere comes up. Like I said, that's usually, like, add on to the board. If you can't get to Scythe, then you, you make, like, Sphere in one of these guys. But usually, that would get you to Scythe. If you don't think you can get to Titan, then ending on Colossus Sphere is still pretty good. Or ending on Colossus Sphere IP is still really strong. But then you're probably able to Scythe um, with, like, a hand that can make that much. But Sphere Colossus is still really strong. Um, it's kind of like Sphere Tidying in um, the Dragon Link. It's still, like, shut... It, it's still, like, du it, like, you don't die. You don't lose. Like, you're still, like... It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I feel like I'm rambling a lot. I'm saying words poorly, but whatever. Anyway, next we play the One Sum Summoner. This is a cool extender. Like, this is a pretty solid monster in general with the deck, but it's, like, kind of weird. Um, it doesn't come up very frequently, but it's a cool card. Next we have the IP. This is pretty solid, like, to just add to your end board. IP... Colossus, IP Spheres, um, all those those end boards are pretty solid. IP Colossus or Sphere Colossus is a pretty common end board if you're not scything, um, and that's like pretty good. And you can't always like sometimes you have aloof lupine and you can't make the spheres. You have to go for like Mascarena, um, but that's still not like not bad. Cross Sheep is a really interesting extender. 
um, especially with the spell card or just like using monsters from your board to make these. Uh, it's really good. It can become a solid extender. You can make a loof lupine, um, which isn't bad. And you can bring back snow. That's really it. Uh, you can bring back matrix and then like turn into a colossus. So like depending on the board on your board state, you can make like cross sheep and then use one of your guys from the board to make the Titan and then bring back with the cross sheep, the uh, matrix and then link, uh, fuse that guy tribute that guy to make colossus and then you can end on like titan colossus on the follow-up turn really easily so like I, cross sheep hasn't come up much for me yet but it like when it does it's clutch then uh the dagda self-explanatory that's like the main combo is dagda titan um anaconda this card's actually really solid um we don't have dpe yet but like this card's pretty, still pretty good for ascending the fusion it's usually follow-up play like on the next turn um you just make uh anaconda summon out the titan um you know answer your opponent's board pretty well through that it's pretty good um first pretty solid it's come up a couple times it's, it's pretty good uh transverse like i said it's like flavor like this card's definitely cuttable if you want to add like another card um cut this card <laughs> it's pretty bad it's not very good it comes up sometimes i haven't made it yet but it comes up uh unicorn access for the ip stuff and then appalooza just to you know that's a deck that can utilize appalooza so we're playing it Anyway, that is really it for the deck profile. Um, hopefully, uh, DB wasn't working for me, so I couldn't make this on there. And this is on my alt account, so that's why it's on here. It's kind of weird, I know. It kind of sucks, but whatever. Anyway, um, hopefully I'll get the um, deck profile in, or the deck list in the description. But if I can't, yeah, here's the, the full list. I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and do a replay. It's already up. Yes, sir. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into right into this replay. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, this is one of the replays where I, like, do the most. I, I just scythe, I just scythe lock people um, with this replay. Let me move myself back over to this side. And smaller. Okay. Into the replay. So, let's go ahead and get it started. Hit play. Here we are. Okay. So, pretty weird hand, um, but it does do the combo. Um, at first, when I was looking at this hand, I was like, oh, this is gross. This is really bad. Um, but yeah, you can go dark, discard the dark, bring out that, summon matrix, link it into the uh, Colossus, not really link it, and then search another dragon matrix, which is pretty good. Special the Collapse Serpent out by banishing the matrix, and then link into the Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon, uh, uh, the Collapse Serpent is going to go ahead and get us the White Dragon. Special out the White Dragon. Now we have the two monsters for Dagda, which is going to be pretty good here. Going to make the Dagda right here. Boom. There he is. That's our boy. That could have been a Spheres, uh, but instead we went for this play. We banish the Titan and discard a uh, Thunder, special out the Titan, and then we activate the Thunder Dragon Fusion, and chain link two is Dagda. Dagda is going to go ahead and set ourselves an Artifact Scythe from our deck, and then Thunder Dragon Fusion is going to put those all those cards back and make another Titan. Um, now, I was thinking uh, maybe we could, like, you know go a little further but i i couldn't i mistake but anyway into my opponent's turn we go draw phase activate dark chain link two titan titan targeting the scythe scythe go ahead and special out and my opponent's like oh i just got scythe in master duel it doesn't happen that much it doesn't happen at all nobody plays droplets nobody respect nobody respects this stuff anyway scythe activates my opponent goes summon harpy perfumer i negated it i don't know why like I, it doesn't matter what my opponent gets here off of this um, so I don't really know why I negated it. I figured, hey, you need an extender now to do anything. And they can't do anything even with an extender. He goes elegant egotist, bring out a guy, um, alluring, and then he scoops, realizing he cannot special summon from the extra deck. He probably read Scythe just there after I already summoned it and started playing his turn. He probably didn't respect Scythe. He probably didn't know what it did. So he just, like, continued playing and then lost. That's really all it is. Anyway, that is uh, all I got for you today for the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. It makes a really big difference. It really does. And then, as always, the TCG affiliate link in the description down below. If you do shop for IRL cards, click on it. Shop. Check out. No cost extra to you. And it directly supports the channel. I do appreciate it. Anyway, that is it. Have a good week. Goodbye.